<laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Tiffany Bradley, and we're here at Art Off Pause. Uh, today, we have our guest, Adrian Nduma, who is based in Nairobi, Kenya. So if you haven't been here before, welcome. If you have, you know the drill. But basically, I will share a little bit about Adrian. Um, I'll read a critical source, and then we'll just talk about how his work and his life has changed uh, before and after the COVID lockdown. So, um, oh, and the chat is on the side if you're on Crowdcast, and if you're on YouTube watching live or watching the recording, hey, you can ask questions, but we super appreciate you tuning in. Um, so that's it. So Adrian is a professional contemporary artist based in Kenya. He holds a bachelor's degree in education from Kenyatta University, and he largely works with acrylics on canvas. He has crisscross professions beginning as a high school teacher, um, followed by advertising agency, bank, um, and was taking his master's degree in business administration when he decided to embark on his art career full time and he was the first chairman of the Kenya Visual Artist Network. Adrian's work can be seen in collectors, homes, offices, and public spaces. Notable among um, his work are two huge paintings at the entrance of the State House Nairobi um, and four others that are at the entrance of the First Lady's office. And he's done tons of commissions um, and held exhibitions in, let's see, uh, Kenya, Dubai, Zanzibar, and China. Um, and I should say Adrian founded Bonzo Art Gallery when he started his art career full time. Um, so given all of the crisscrossing professions, uh, what I chose for Adrian today is Ogilvy on advertising. Um, which is sort of a classic advertising text um, with all the crazy problematics of such. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is a little paragraph about brand image. And so Adrian, <laughs> you, you can incorporate or respond as you see fit. Um, okay. So it says, you know, you now have to decide what image you want for your brand. Image means personality. Products like people have personalities and they can make or break them in the marketplace. The personality of a product is an amalgam of many things. Its name, its packaging, its price, the style of its advertising, and above all, the nature of the product itself. Every advertisement should be thought of as a contribution to the brand image. Um, so I, I picked this partially because of the crisscrossing, but partially because as we look at your work and your career, even as yep. you move to fine art, you've worked um, with a lot of corporate crossovers, whether it's hotels, whether it's um, corporate collections. So I'd love to hear um, how how you got situated in that before the COVID crisis and then how things have changed since. All right, cool. Um, my name is Adrian uh, Nduma. Um, uh, I'm a Kenyan um, living in Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya. And um, uh, to your question about, um, you know, my journey in art and um, into art and before, that you know like, like like you rightfully said i was a high school teacher i went to advertising i went into um banking and then finally i decided to just quit banking and get started on my art career and um you know it, it's been um, quite a journey and um you you know quite a self-discovery among other things um and uh it's interesting that you quote uh, Ogilvy, and I've done, I actually did a bit of work freelance for Ogilvy and Meta, uh, uh, the advertising company, uh, one of the adv advertising companies here in Kenya. I didn't work for them full time, but I did a lot of work for them. I, actually, it was my first, um, my first uh, uh, choice uh, after college. I was interested in joining Ogilvy and Meta. 
but um, I got a post. I got a post elsewhere, you know, as a visualizer, graphic graphic designer, and uh, you know, um, illustrator in another advertising company called Newton Bates. Very well. So my style has changed over time, and um, you know, it's come through uh, from an abstract paint, an abstract, you know, uh, painter. You know, when I started way back in two zero zero four. All the way to what I'm doing right now, and um, uh, before before COVID, of course, there's been uh, there was uh, uh, as I explained uh, my metamorphosis in style. Um, before before COVID uh, was exactly what I've explained, and after COVID, a, a few things have changed. Of course, so there's been a bit of uh, uh, just because the end of yes. How would you? Um what would an average week be like for you before COVID? Like, what would you be working on? How would you structure painting versus events versus anything else? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. How, how, what would an average week be like for you before the COVID lockdown? Like, yeah, yeah. how would you structure your time? What would you do? Very well. Before COVID, it would be a case of waking up in the morning. I would then drive to my studio, um, uh, get a few things done. You know, before it's ten o'clock. Then, as from ten o'clock, I would be running around, following up on um, on customers and making new customers. I mean, prospect converting prospects into customers uh, up until say uh, two o'clock there about when people break one o'clock when they break for 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 lunch. And I would then come back into the studio, continue with my work um, until say uh, five o'clock, six o'clock there about. Sometimes when it's a bit, when the work is really much or you know the drive is still on, I will probably go on until say seven o'clock, eight, then drive back to my house. Uh, that would be typically what I would do before COVID. And for the time that you're working, what, like what's the split between painting and dealing with clients or de dealing with business things? Wow, good question. Um, um, it, it's it's a it's, it's a, sometimes it's, it's situational and it's not really a fixed sort of thing. You um, some weeks are client heavy in the sense that they want their work checked, they want uh, their locations you know, checked out, I need to go and take measurements, I need to go and look at uh, the framing that they want their work to be done, you know, on and all these sort of things. Other times, uh, you know, I don't have so much of client uh, interference. I'll be probably 80% in my studio doing my thing, uh, making art and uh, coming up with ideas and ex executing, you know, physical execution of the work. So um, it depends on um, really, uh, what the client is asking for, but at the same time, I also have to balance between what the client wants for, wants me to do and uh, what I am doing privately for my collections and for my private, uh, you know, exhibitions that you know have nothing to do with clients. They will come and take a look at them when I put up the work. Okay. So then, how has that changed now since COVID? Well, there's been a bit of a change. Uh, quite uh, significant because the first thing I had to do is uh, I had to relocate uh, from my house and um, a portion, a part of my gallery uh, come studio to become uh, my household for my wife and children. So, um, because it was a, it's a large space, you know, it's, it's a whole uh, quarter acre with uh, the house is a bit big, so I, I just needed to split half of it to go to my family and half of it comes to my business. So that was the first change that I had to make a, a, a logistical adjustment so that then my movement uh, is not too too much during these COVID times, uh, which then would uh, you know pose a risk to my family. And so um, that was, uh, it also had an economic um, you know, angle to it because then I save on the rent on the other side that I was paying rent 
in, in a different house. So that, that is the first adjust, adjustment. And also now, the, the second adjustment is with the clients themselves. They are not very keen on visits, except some who um, will be very will be comfortable with you going to their premises or going to their homes. But there has been a bit of a, of a caution when it comes to you know visiting uh, physically the clients you know spaces whether it's an office whether it's the home because the children there you know some offices have also closed so uh, there's there's a lot more now of me doing a lot more work in my studio and the clients wanting to come to the studio instead of me going to their premises and has there been a change in the type of work that you want to do Post COVID, yes, there's been a bit of. Um, I think because of the the sort of you know with with, with an artist, you're always uh, trying to challenge yourself. But this sort of uh, situation has caused uh, the challenge to be imposed. It was an imposed uh, challenge because I mean uh, challenge because then you have to to think at, under pressure. There's the anxiety that you know there will be no incomes, you know, and so on and so forth. So if you have to think harder. I had to think harder. I had to find ways of seeing how best I can uh, polish up on my, my style. To, to, that, to that end, um, uh, there is a, a bit of discovery on my end, uh, discovery about uh, what strokes um, are more uh, sort of my signature and which strokes are not my signature, um, a bit of process. What, what is my process of painting, you know, with the, the different uh, materials that I use, palette knife, brushes, sometimes I use my own hands, and so on and so forth. So it's been a bit of a polishing of style. If you look, if you just look behind me, one of that is behind me, you'll see a painting with uh, some um, uh, superb stylings. And that is lately what I would say is a stroke of the style that is coming through to me we, as being- We have a little bit of it, but not all of it. Um, and I just, so let me just do a bit for the there you can see. You go. When, you, when you're there, then we can see it. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. I'm sure you can you can see it now. Yes. Yeah. There it is, and uh, you know, uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that is that sort of is my my latest my sort of uh, after a bit of introspection and stuff, I find myself gravitating towards this very sort of free strokes and um, uh, bold colors and uh, also bold subject matter and before that it wasn't as vivid or as clear to me so how do you choose your subjects we see um nature we see landscapes we see portraits are there any subjects that you gravitate towards more than others um, it's basically my experiences, my daily experiences, the places I've been, very ordinary places that I remember that, you know, I've been to and, you know, in, my, in the past. And it's basically my, I want to create things that I, I feel personally or I've experienced. But more importantly is that I will use the subject matter, not really to, doc, I will, part of it is documentation of the place. But uh, the bigger portion of it is that I want to think with my heart. I want to impose myself in the in the sort of setting and use color and other techniques to sort of get tell me what I feel about the place in terms of many things. Whether it is the, whether it is the, the the spirit that I that I that I get and I mean the, the vibe, you know, um, and so on and so forth. It's, it's 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 very many things at the same time. We sometimes they're non they're non discursive. You cannot put a finger you know onto them or to, to a feeling because it's complex i mean a feeling is complex sometimes when you say you know i like this place you really can't strip it down and analyze it but i want to use whatever subject matter which is in my immediate vicinity or i have experienced to then uh, get my heart to to feel the full dimension of the place but you're based in the city right yeah so why isn't the city an interesting subject to you? Because I, I haven't seen in the things that you've shared much city. I see more rural 
and uh, village landscapes. So why do you think that you respond to well, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I haven't thought of that, but off the top of, uh, off the top of my mind is that uh, like, uh, you will see a few people in my compositions, mm -hmm. a few people. Um, you will, uh, uh, and for sure, I am more into the landscapes and the, and the animals and a bit of people. Uh, uh, to answer your question, what I would say is that there's a, uh, uh, the, the city doesn't have too much of life in terms of the physical city. So I would rather, uh, you know, capture life in plants, in animals, in people, as opposed to physical buildings. And even if it's a physical building, the setting will be there, but I want to capture the essence of the, the person. One of the latest paintings that I did, um, one of the, is, uh, is one on self of selfies. Some ladies just taking selfies because, you know, it's very, you observe it every time you see these girls taking selfies of themselves and stuff like that. There's a vibe to it. There's a bit of, um, uh, there's a bit of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's a personality thing. It's a generational thing. It's, it's something they feel good about. I want to capture that. There's life in that. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, there is a national park. You know, Nairobi happens to have a national park in the city. And so sometimes I'll drive into the national park and see some of the wildlife and, you know, the, uh, the, uh, and a lot of the, the lions and um, uh, rhinos that I've done are actually uh, have been observed live the national park so there's a for, for me it's about life if i can get life in um, in plants and scenery and and people it is for me a lot more it has it has better vibe for me than physical buildings and stuff like that not not to discount that there's a bit of life in the city that you know you might be quite interesting but uh, i want to dig deeper into the spirit of this thing and i find people wildlife scenery to execute the kind of vibe that resonates with me. Maybe the city doesn't really, <laughs> you know, the physical city does not really touch me so much, but in the end, that is the inclination uh, of my art. Okay. Well, I'll let everybody on the live stream know. We'll take questions now, but I will okay. start with a question, Adrian, which is, um, what do you think you'd like to continue after the COVID era and what would you like to leave behind? Uh, well, after the COVID era, the, what I would like to continue is the introspection into my style so that it's a lot more vivid and a lot more clear to me why I do the art that I do. Um, and one of the things I've realized and which I will continue with is that I am keen on documenting uh, physically, but also seeing what lies beneath the physical, you know, observable things that I, I will plant on my canvas. So that will continue. What I will leave behind is um, a, a, a sort of indiscipline that I've had before because you know this pressure has caused a lot of us to be a, a lot more disciplined in our execution, in our um, subject matter, and so on and so forth. I want to leave away that indiscipline, so that I then focus on clearly that which to me resonates with uh, with my my feeling and who I really am. Because essentially, I'm planting I'm planting my signature on a canvas, and I have to justify it to myself. Why is it that? this landscape means something to me and not the building in the city. So to that end, I'm keener on getting myself extremely focused on that which I put on canvas and leaving away things that were irrelevant like I did in the past. And what would you like for Kenyan society in the future or Kenyan art in the future? Well, I, I would, um, uh, I wish the Kenyan artist would uh, dig deeper into the spirit of the people around themselves and, uh, you know, put on canvas or on stone, you know, carving, you know, the, the sculptors, the ceramists and all this other media. If we can get artists to really reflect the positive uh, energies, the positive energies of this society, <clears throat> that would probably be 
I think I don't speak too much. So um, yeah, that, that would probably be a good thing because then uh, you have um, you have a healthier lot. And I believe it's a noble cause and that um, an artist has got that noble responsibility <coughs> to sort of uh, breathe life to um, a people so that they, then they see themselves in better light they appreciate themselves a lot more. They appreciate their surroundings a bit more, you know, their families uh, and whatever else that they do um, that is of value because without that, then you have a society which is quite much in the darkness. And I am a firm believer that, uh, you know, um, a society that doesn't recognize that is, um, lacks beauty. There's a lot of ugliness in societies that then do not, um, you know, sort of engage artists in all ways. So that is what I wish the Kenyan artists would actually have as a basis um, of um, their executions and whatever endeavors they're doing, uh, because then you, we become a, a relevant, uh, a very relevant ingredient in society. And do you see a difference in the way that artists are working together right now or not? I do. I do, I do. I have seen a bit of an acceleration, even of the younger artists that are coming straight in from the colleges and, uh, you know, for uh, mentorship and internships and things like that, um, residencies, you'll find that there is more of inquiry. There is more of an inquisitive mind in the current uh, um, artist. I've seen a lot of, um, before that, uh, before that we, we have had very sort of uh, pigeonholed sort of art where you say, okay, uh, it's, almost, it's almost like primitive art, where you have, you know, like in the 80s and something where you had very many uh, self-taught artists that uh, were probably um, directed by the curator of the gallery to paint in a certain way, which then informed uh, the narrative about what uh, African artists and to a large extent what Africans are. So you find, you know, these paintings with the, you know, uh, in proportionate images with large noses and big behinds in very awkward setups. Uh, that kind of art, uh, I hope, can die a natural death because it has informed a, lo a lot of uh, stereotypes about who we are and uh, as a people and also as a society. I mean, we are a society with the, the in uh, which has a lot of vibrance, you know, the, the different races in Kenya, the, the, the different things happening of beauty of color, you know, of beauty of uh, which which resonate well with humanity that I think the artist should be able to um, uh, record and document and have celebrated. And that way, then we have, uh, we have art that is, uh, you know, getting not, not only recording, but also impacting, impacting society in a positive way, in that there are positive vibes about, you know, all these things, whether it's racial relations, whether it is, you know, family values or um, ethics in workplaces, those sort of things are key. And if the artist does not then talk about this thing in his work in a way that uh, then can catch the audience, um, then he just remains to be, it just remains to be, you know, like, I don't know, it's something, you're just doing some things, but, but, but really they don't, you have not optimized on the talent that you have. So you, you raise an interesting point about the idea of primitive art and what African art um, has been in some people's minds. Um, and before, before uh, this conversation, you talked a little bit about how um, South Africa and Nigeria are such important markets for African artists across the continent. So how do you see the relationship um, changing or shifting given where we are in the world between all of those different African markets for art? Um, the relationships between the, you're talking about relationships between the artists in South Africa, in, in, in Nigeria and in all these places? Yeah, and well, it's interesting when I asked about collecting 
I first asked about like London or, you know, different Western capitals. And you said, well, South Africa and Nigeria are huge collecting markets. So of course people want exhibitions and collectors um, in the US or in Europe, but it's also important um, to be in these larger African markets. So do you, do you see um, a shift of power as we're, uh, as the world is changing in this particular period? Absolutely, there is uh, a lot of, uh, you see Africa in, by all means and in uh, literally all the sectors of the economy, whether it is uh, finance, you know, agriculture in all areas is, is a focus for everybody. So the future is in Africa, that is what we believe. And we know even in terms of art, we should be getting a lot more activity and interest in African art, African contemporary art. It's already happening, but we expect that it's gonna be rising in terms of uh, appreciation, in terms of, I mean, the Sotheby's, the Christie's and all these other guys, the top, they will be coming to check out a, a bit of uh, what's, uh, what's going on here, one way or the other. So the shift is happening already. Um, and it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's a wave that is not just in art, but in many other things, people explore new things because, I mean, uh, we, we, people are already quite um, saturated. I don't want to use the word tired, but saturated with a lot of these things from the West, from China, from the rest of it. So Africa has always been a virgin place. And in terms of art, it's even more so because there's a lot of art happening around and uh, we've seen people in the West coming to collect and you know it's growing. So there's certainly a shift and we are hoping for better times in the continent as artists. Okay. Um, are there any last thoughts or ideas you'd like to share with us? About what? Well, anything, <laughs> the future, the past, <laughs> primitive art, Kenya. <laughs> uh, uh, well, um, yes, I, I, what I would like to say is that um, um, an artist, uh, any any artist um, is influenced by a certain spirit to create that which he creates and uh, it's important that they take themselves as such. And so for us to have good art, it has to really come from that place uh, in your spirit, which is uninterrupted and which most people will not get to. And that is why we are called artists, you know, because we dig deep into our, our, our thoughts and in, into our spirits. Uh, and that, of course, is what we have to do as artists. And I hope a lot of uh, artists in the continent would, uh, would uh, just dig deeper and get more critical and get more, uh, you know, um, potent, potent uh, content that can influence and uh, shape and, uh, the current narrative of negativity in the world. Of course, it's a sick, it's a sick world in many ways, and I, I feel that we are part of the medicine that uh, society is waiting for. That's that's an amazing note to end on. Um, <laughs> Thank you to Adrian and Duma of Bonzo Art Gallery, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, so Adrian's website is in the chat. And if you're on YouTube, I will post it in the video link. Um, stay tuned for more. We're always at colorcritics.com. And be well, stay safe. Uh, art as medicine, all helpful things. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.